Welcome to our video covering one of the unique methods of trading with trend lines. This is the second part of the three part series. In the first part, we discussed about identification of TD points and on how to draw TD lines. In this part, we will be covering the entries, targets and stops. In case you are watching this part directly, I suggest you watch our part one of this series. That covers how to draw TD points and TD lines because without it, you won't understand much of what we will be discussing here. So first, we will be looking at long entries. The rules for the same are as follows. The first step is to spot the TD supply points and to draw a TD supply line as discussed in part one of this video series. Do note that we need to keep drawing or modifying the TD supply line after a new TD supply point is identified and the same process is to be repeated till the price breaks above the TD supply line. TD supply line is always downward sloping. Now technically, this is not the case. A TD supply line can be horizontal too. However, the significance of horizontal TD supply line is not great. Therefore, to filter out good trading opportunities, only downward sloping TD supply lines are to be considered. Price should break above the TD supply line. An opportunity for taking a trade can be considered only thereafter. Let's see on the chart. First, we identify the TD supply points and draw the TD supply line. Then, we wait for price to break above the TD supply line. Look at the marked candle. We can see that the price broke above and closed above the TD supply line. This is our breakout candle and now we can consider taking a long trade. I hope this is clear. After an entry is taken, we need to calculate targets for the trade. There are three methods for calculating targets. Let's go through one by one. We are looking at the first method of calculating targets for a TD supply line breakout. This is the least precise of the three methods, but the target is very easy to calculate. What we do in this is, we identify the candle with lowest low below the TD supply line. Then we calculate the distance or difference between the lowest low and the TD supply line. You can see that the low of the candle is rupees 526.05. The price level of the TD supply line exactly above the same is rupees 781.15. You can draw a vertical line from the lowest price till the TD supply line to calculate the total distance. This difference between the TD supply line and the lowest price is 255.10. Now this difference is added to the point of contact. That is point at which we have a break above the TD supply line. By adding this difference to the point of contact, we get a target of rupees 926.05. Do note that the target is calculated from the TD supply line point of contact and not from the close of the breakout candle. Now let's see how to calculate targets by second method. This is a little conservative method compared to the first method. In this method, we identify the candle with the lowest close below the TD supply line. Thereafter, we calculate the distance between the low of that candle and the TD supply line. You can see that the low of the candle with the lowest close is rupees 542.65. The price level of the TD supply line exactly above the same is rupees 764.95. You can draw a vertical line from that price till the TD supply line to calculate the total distance. This difference comes to rupees 222.30. Now this difference is added to the point of contact. By this, uh, by adding this difference of uh, rupees 222.30 to the point of contact, we get a target of 893.25. You can see that due to this conservative approach, the target is reduced. So now instead of rupees 926.05, which is calculated by first method, the target is reduced to rupees 893.25. I hope this is clear. Now let's see how to calculate targets by third method. This method is similar to the first method. The only difference is we calculate the difference from close of the candle and not from the lowest low price. Again, we identify the candle with the lowest low below the TD supply line as we did in the first method. However, now we calculate the distance between the close of that candle and the TD supply line. You can see that the close of candle is rupees 573.60. Remember, 
in first method we took the low of the candle while calculating the difference in the third method that is this method we are considering the close of the same candle now the price level of td supply line exactly above the said candle is rupees 781.15 you can draw a vertical line from the close till the td supply line to calculate the total difference this difference comes to rupees 207.55 now this difference is added to the point of contact by adding this difference <coughs> we get a target of rupees 878.50 i hope the methods discussed for calculating targets are clear now that we have discussed on how to calculate targets by various methods we would look into how to place stops on a trade theoretically there are a couple of methods to determine stops on the trade now we do make some modifications while placing our stops but following two methods are shared by mr dimak himself let's see how to place stops for long trades by first method the stops under this method are triggered when an opposite signal is generated let's see how once an entry is made after a td supply line breakout we look for opposing td demand points so in this case we will start identifying td demand points i have marked couple of td demand points the next step is we draw a td demand line by connecting the points we remain in the trade till either our target is achieved or price breaks below the td demand line stop loss is triggered if price breaks below the td demand line the logic behind this method is that a contradictory breakout signal is generated as price has broken below the td demand line look at the marked candle the same has broken below the td demand line thus generating a contradictory signal to our long trade the stops are triggered according to this method further let's see how to place stops for long trades by second method the calculation of stop loss is pretty straightforward in this method once an entry is made after the td supply line breakout we extend the said td supply line in future you can look that the same is drawn uh, diagonally in the future stop loss is triggered if the price breaks below the td supply line i have marked the candle which breached the td supply line you can see that it has closed below the td supply line now theoretically speaking there is a slight modification to this method that is mr dimak suggested that stops are triggered if the opening of the day after the breakout is a gap down and the open was below the td supply line or stops are triggered if the close of the day after the breakout is below the td supply line however that is not always the case and therefore slight modification is recommended i hope concepts discussed here are clear now let's discuss the entry rules for going short or a td demand line breakdown the rules for entry for going short are exactly opposite to that of td supply line breakout in this we we'll look for a price to break below the td demand line so now we will be looking at short entries the rules for the same are as follows the first step is to spot the td demand points and to draw a td demand line as discussed in part 1 of this video series td demand line is always upward sloping as mentioned earlier this is not always the case uh, because a horizontal td supply line or a td demand line will have very little significance the third point is the price should break below the td demand line an opportunity for taking a trade can be considered only th thereafter let's see the same on the chart first we identify the td demand points and we draw a td demand line then we wait for price to break below the td demand line look at the marked candle we can see that the price broke below and closed below the td demand line this is our breakout candle and now we can consider taking a short trade i hope this is clear after an entry is taken that is after the breakout we need to calculate targets for the trade again there are three methods for calculating targets we will walk through the same quickly let's look at the first method what we do and this is that we identify the candle with highest high above the td demand line then we calculate the distance between the highest high and the td demand line you can draw a vertical line from the highest price till the td demand line to calculate the total difference 
This difference is now subtracted from the point of contact. After that, you will get your target according to the first method. Now let's see how to calculate targets by second method. In this method, we identify the candle with highest close above the TD demand line. Thereafter, we calculate the distance between the high of that candle, that is the candle with highest close and the TD demand line. You can draw a vertical line from that price till the TD demand line to calculate the total distance. Now this distance is subtracted from the point of contact. By subtracting this difference, we get our target according to the second method. Now let's see how to calculate targets by the third method. This method is similar to first method. Now here the difference is that we take close of the candle which has highest price uh, above the TD demand line. However, now we calculate the distance between the close of that candle and the TD demand line. Do note that in first method, we took the high of the candle while calculating the difference. However, now we are considering the close of the same candle. You can draw a vertical line from the, that price till the TD demand line to calculate total distance. This difference is then subtracted from point of contact and we have a target as per the third method. Now let's look into how to place stops on a trade. Again, theoretically, there are a couple of methods to determine stops on trade. Let's see how to place stops according to the first method. Once an entry is made after a TD demand line breakdown, we look for a TD supply point. The next step is we draw a TD supply line by connecting TD supply points. Stop loss is triggered when price breaks above the TD supply line. Let's see how to place stops for long trades, uh, sh sorry, short trades by second method. Once an entry is made after the TD demand line breakout, we extend the TD demand line into the future. Stop loss is triggered if the price breaks above the TD demand line. Theoretically speaking, there is slight modification to this method. As we discussed while uh, uh, in long entries, here also, we are extending the line into the future. The modification is similar to that of TD supply line breakout. Here, we will not be looking only uh, on a next day opening, but any time when the price breaks above the TD demand line again, our stop loss would be triggered. Now that we have looked into various methods of calculating targets and stops, an important question arises as to which method is best and whether any modification is possible for setting up targets or setting up stops. It is important to note that Mr. Dimark developed this amazing trading method decades ago. Most of his work in technical analysis in addition to TD line trading method is based on market structure and on market timing techniques. However, today's markets are much more volatile and therefore the need arises to modify the calculations for targets or stops. <clears throat> I personally modify the stop placement. We will see the same on the chart. You can see that I have simply adjusted the stop loss below the swing low point. Note that the basics of TD demand points and TD supply lines are unchanged. Further, with respect to targets, I suggest few modifications like trailing the stop loss once trade starts going in the desired direction along with exiting partial position before actual target. Now this will take some practice. This is a more conservative approach. I have shared what I generally do while trading with TD lines. It is absolutely okay to stick with methods as suggested by Mr. Demark himself. Again, the most important aspect here is to stick with the method selected for trading. To begin with, I would suggest to take conservative approach for calculating targets. I hope these points are clear. Finally, to conclude with, I would recommend starting with level 2 or level 3 TD lines breakout or break, breakdown trades. How to identify the level 2 or level 3 TD points and TD lines is already discussed in part 1 of this video series. This will be a more conservative approach and would automatically reduce and filter the trades. In the next and the final part, we will be looking into modifications with regards to selection of TD points itself along with certain qualifiers for making a trading decision. I hope you have understood the concepts we shared here.